Welcome to Three Righteous Mamas, a podcast brought to you by The Signal. We are on a mission to transform our country, to tell the stories that matter, celebrate the power and hope of pissed off mamas who are building a better future for all of our children. I'm Cristina Sensun Ramirez. And I'm Martha Pincoffs. We're missing our friend Muna today, but hoping she can join us in a little bit. And we love being in conversation with you all. Please subscribe um, and please leave a review. Let us know what you think, what you like, and tell a friend. Also, we've got incredible gear, the softest, most cute sweatshirts you've ever seen, and onesies that say, my mama is righteous, which you can get at threerighteousmamas.com and see our store there. So, I'm really excited about our guest today, um, and let's get started talking to Sarah Wilson, who's going to be talking to us about the power of art and something we always do for our own kids. We try and show them instead of tell them how to express themselves, and we're going to talk to Sarah about how we can do just that with our little ones. Christina, this week, you put... Um, you made something happen that I could never have conceived of in my life. One of the most moving mm -hmm. things that I've ever seen at the Texas Capitol. And you brought a beauty into that space that it doesn't necessarily deserve, but that maybe it can earn. Um, and I would love for you to share with, like, with our listeners what, what went on, how you came to think about that. And, um, and God, thank you for being in this world. <laughs> thank you. Well, um, you know, a, a, w a couple of weeks ago, probably two weeks ago, a friend of mine, um, and, you know, I just took this new job at Next Gen America, the largest youth voting rights organization. And my friend, um, Patricia that works at Joe called, called me and she said, I know you're really good at thinking of, um, protests that are creative, because that's kind of what I'm known for from the quinceanera protest we did at the Capitol with 15 girls in their quinceanera dresses against anti-immigrant legislation that went totally viral. I mean, it was like, I don't know, probably like 50, 100 million Americans were reached by it. It was, it was incredible. Yeah. And that was like a couple years ago when we launched yeah. Jolt. Uh, a few years ago before that, I that had our staff when I was at Workers Defense Project make 138 coffins that represented the number of construction workers that were killed on the job that year and marched them to the Capitol. Um, that one was darker, but it was powerful. I, yeah, it was powerful. And so when she asked me, it took me about a couple minutes, I said, Well, you know, sadly, I think this legislation is going to pass. Yeah. And so we need to show people light in the darkness mm -hmm. and like, give them a sense of their own power and their own beauty while they're under assault. Yeah. And so what the, ultimately what people are afraid of, and we're talking about legislators, mostly white Republicans that think their job is to seek power for their own vanity and serve interests of donors instead of the, the Texas populace. So what they're really afraid of is the fact that the state is now majority people of color and they don't mm -hmm. want our voices heard. So why don't we release um, 270,000 roughly rose petals in the Texas rotunda and have someone sing amazing grace while we do it. And I had no idea what it was going to look like. I figured it would look nice. I figured <laughs> it would be, guess what? I haven't done that before. And that we'd, they'd have them all different colors, but I knew it would be beautiful. Yeah. And like, you really need something. I feel like sometimes, especially as progressives, we can get trapped in like so much of what we're fighting against that we forget to imagine and envision what we want to build. And so that's absolutely. what I was trying to do. Yes, absolutely. And oh my God, if you haven't seen this video um, and the powerful voice of Tori from, um, Tierra uh, band that's like this amazing girl. Tierra girls. Tierra yeah. girls, sorry. Here in Austin is amazing. Oh my God. And I told her, I said, I want you to dress as like 
a human rose. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> do you have, can you wrap yourself in like rose color? She's like, I can wear all black. And I was like, no, I need you to wear like, you are a rose yourself because you are a rose. Cause she's like 20 or 19 years old. Yes. And she belted it out. And so we had, it was just so beautiful, so powerful thousands and thousands of colorful rose petals falling while she stood in the middle of the rotunda on the Texas flag, looking straight up all the way to the top, belting from her heart and her belly, like all of it out. And everyone just like, no one knew it was going to happen. We did not ask permission. We just filled up 30 backpacks with, you know, quarter million roses in my backyard (laughs) the night before. And, um, took them to the rotunda and had young people throw them out, all go up and throw them out while she was singing. I cried. Like, oh I my cried. I cried watching it just because it was such a stunning display of, of strength and beauty in the face of cowardice that is ultimately is cowardice that is driving those legislators to aim for the votes. Like they're scared of losing power and that 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 you conceived of it in this way that it put the beauty forward that it put the the strength forward in a way that was entirely inclusive and entirely um hopeful was like i think it's impossible to watch the video and not cry yeah and i and i picked the song amazing grace because i wanted amazing grace is uh a, spa, a song really about human dignity. Yeah. Right. And it's also a quintessentially American song mm-hmm. to say, like, we are not outsiders. Mm-hmm. We are not second class citizens. Um, we know that people fought, mobilized, marched, and people even died for us to have this right. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to give it up without a righteous fight. And you could just feel it like in there. And I just, that's why I think I'm so excited to talk to Sarah t- today because like art is, I saw so many comments on social media, people being like, this is so moving. I cried. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. This is powerful. This is so beautiful. Like, why don't we do more of this? And there were so many young people at the Capitol that told me like, wow, this was the most amazing thing I've ever participated in. Yeah. And, um, even in, I think the thing for us, we've got, especially as parents, remember, it's like, we don't have to shield our kids from the darkness in the world. We have to expose them to it and then let them see the light through it, like the right. path forward. And that's what I think is important. I totally agree. I think that we, as much time as we spend talking about the troubles that we have in the world, we've got to also spend the time imagining the world that we can create and and you did that for us. So well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for watching it and for always supporting me. And, um, you know, for folks that are listening, you know, kick a donation to next gen or jolt. Jolt. Um, we had to mobilize pretty quickly and buy lots and lots of roses. And I had 3000 roses arrive to my house. Like <laughs> there was a hundred thousand rose petals that arrived somewhere else. And 3000 roses arrived at my house. And I was like, it felt like pretty woman. It was- I bet. How many, about <laughs> how many rose petals are on each rose? Do you know? I don't know. They just told us like the people, well, we bought petals and then they messed up the order. And so then we had to order roses and get roses other places donated separately. Jesus. And then we just took them off in the backyard and um, it was a really fun, beautiful time. So I loved it. Okay. Let's talk more art with Sarah Wilson. Yes. Um, I am thrilled to introduce you all today to my very best friend since we were two years old, um, Sarah Wilson. She also just so happens to be an incredibly talented photographer and cinematographer. Um, You have seen her work in the New York Times, Time, The Atlantic, Texas Monthly, Mother Jones, and a million other places. Um, She has recently put up an exhibit, a public exhibit around Austin, Texas called Essentials ATX. Essentials um, explores the, well, I mean, it's a portrait series of essential workers in Austin, female essential workers in Austin, Texas. And they are, she has them um, wheat pasted 
on the side of enormous buildings downtown. So it's this really gorgeous um, experiment in art. And I encourage you to, to check that out if you're in Austin in person. If not, you can find Sarah uh, on Instagram at Sarah Wilson Photo. Um, so let's talk to one of my best friends in the whole world. So welcome to the podcast, Sarah Wilson. So glad to be here. Thank you guys for having me. We're really happy that you're here. Um, we So we start every single podcast with the same question, um, and that is this one. How did your wonderful mother shape the human that you are today and how you engage with the world? You know, it's such a good question. Um, my mom let me be who I needed to be. And that sounds like a simple uh, concept, but it is not, you know? Um, we're very different people. And yet she saw me for who I was and kind of gave me the space to be me. And, um, you know, my mom, she's had a long life of, you know, a certain kind of struggle. She, she's been sick on and off throughout her, her life. She's had a autoimmune disorder that is life-threatening at times and has been in and out of the hospital. Um, two of her uh, three siblings died from that same uh, disorder. And, um, and she had breast cancer when I was 12. And, you know, it's been a lot of in and out of hospitals and, um, and some sadness and, um, but throughout it all, I just feel that she, she found some form of grace throughout the whole process. And, um, even when she's struggling, she always has open arms and open heart and is ready to listen and be there for me and my friends and, um, and so I just, I, sometimes I don't even understand how she gets to that, that point where she can kind of be open and have that heart and that, that light uh, within her. And, um, and so I, I hope that I've gotten some of that, you know, some of that has rubbed off on me, um, but, but it's kind of a whole nother level. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I'm just... I'm kind of just honored to have been her offspring and <laughs> to have grown up with her. Um, and I know that not everybody can always say that. And um, I don't know, I just feel blessed in that way that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. She is, um, she is one of the safest people I've ever, ever gotten to know ever. Yeah. And yeah. so generous with like with just her presence and her um yeah. care absolutely I, yeah. yeah um will you tell us her name i know her name but we her say is, we like to say her name her name is carol connor wilson carol connor wilson's yeah. big badass mm -hmm. she is she is um i don't know who i was talking to years ago like another one of her you know friends uh this was a, a man uh, was saying, and I did not expect to hear this from her, him, but he said, you know, your mom could start a revolution. And I was like, oh. huh, I never really thought about that. But she is, although she wasn't like, didn't have really strong opinions growing up, I kind of didn't know like where she fit as being like a strong, like outspoken woman, but like over the years, kind of her opinions and her actions have solidified into kind of, I don't know, just a strong, uh, you know, forward thinking, open minded person. And I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for her. So, yeah. Yeah. I love Carol Wilson. Yeah. yeah. Um, Swilly. Yes. Oh gosh. Hey, everybody. I, this will be in the introduction, but this is also my best friend since we were two years old. So I have some informal language and call this Sarah Wilson Swilly. 
Yes, that's my um, adorable. Except my my informalness. Yeah. I think it would be so. I don't think I could call you Sarah Wilson. No, <laughs> just, sorry. Just be weird. Yeah. Um, okay, so Swilly, I have gotten to watch your career like since it was before you picked up a camera. Um, but creativity has always been like an enormous part of who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and I, there's this thread of your work. So you've done work in Jasper after James Bird was dragged to death about the reconciliation in that community. Mm -hmm. um, and we were young when you did that. We were in our twenties when you did that. I might be, have been 21, maybe. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I was, I was 21, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you've done work, uh, with the blind prom and, mm -hmm. um, and nudist colonies and <laughs> amazing portraiture from forever. Mm -hmm. Um, but what, what in all of that, um, and especially in the essentials project that you've, that you're doing now, like, how what is the what is the human connection between all of these things and how do you like when you're thinking about the world that you want to show us because uh -huh. that's I, how i feel like you do it how, how do you pick your projects that's yeah. really my question is how do you like figure uh -huh. that out and if you talk us through how you did it with the essentials project because that one's so fresh yeah um, i think i'd love for everybody to hear more about that sure well, you know, I, I feel like my projects, they're all, you know, they're all pretty different um, and they're kind of end up being long-term projects and, and most of them are portrait based. Uh, but what ends up happening is I'm taking individual portrait or portraits of individuals that come together to kind of talk about a community, um, whether it's a community in crisis, like what was happening in Jasper after that horrible hate crime or, you know, students at, at Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired having an amazing time at prom night. Um, but it's, um, it, I always feel like the portraits, like I'm having a one-on-one -on -one, heart to heart communication with the person in front of my camera. And, um, and it's always about, I think it's like, I see you, I see you, I see you over and over again. That's, that's kind of, I think what's happening um, when I'm taking a portrait that I really, that I know I'm responding to, or I'm responding to the body language or something about what, what per that person is bringing, uh, to the portrait. Um, yeah, I think it's about, you know, our shared humanity, mm -hmm. but it is also about everything that's so different about each and every one of us, you right. know, all of our individual traits and I love to like bring all that forward, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and so yeah, it's about how amazing it is that we ha we're so different, but that somehow that brings us all together, you know. Right. Um, that when we can re respond to that, when we can respect that about mm -hmm. each other. Um, I love that. I never like. I didn't. I didn't see the community piece, and I've known you forever. But that makes so much sense. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It just kind of ends up. I look at my projects now, and I and I kind of just see them as these little groupings. Mm -hmm. but somehow, and I I don't know. This is crazy, but um, I kind of can see all of us work. You know, moving in and out of those communities somehow. Like yeah. the portraits are about individuals, but there's something about them that I want people to be able to put themselves in the shoes of those people and empathize. It's all about like let's go in there and feel all that and and then maybe come out a little bit i don't know with a bigger heart so mm. I, love, I love yeah. that too because one of my favorite mediums is photography i don't consider myself an artist by any means but before you got here we were talking about um i love using art in form of protest and yeah how it can speak to people and move them in a way that data and facts or just like showing up with a sign and anger doesn't uh -huh. like get to that deeper layer of getting to empathy, which I think is so important for actually moving people. So we were just talking about the 
protest that I helped design at the Capitol. Awesome, we released by the, the way. Thank you. You know, yeah. the quarter million rose petals and their symbolism. And what I love about it is like, it's you can use art to really show people a pathway forward. That it can be like how you find power and hope. And you can also paint that vision through art and truth telling and invoke emotion. And, um, you know, you've worked on these projects. And I'm wondering for you, which of the different right now you have this incredible essential workers project, which is just exposing the humanity and also putting in people's face. Like these are the people that are doing all of this work for us, like see them don't, you know, and don't turn away from what they're doing for all of us. But, and then you worked on James Bird's case when you were really young in Jasper, Texas. Yeah. And I'm wondering for you, um, which one of these projects, like, do you feel like reached people emotionally the deepest mm -hmm. and um, how do you try and decide like, what's the truth I'm going to tell? Cause for me, when I do these projects, whether it was the quinceanera protest at the Capitol or this rose petal release, it was, it's, mm -hmm. to me, it's about like, how do I get people to feel something at a deeper sense in themselves and feel like things can be different? Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like the like the Jasper project is so different from this project, but I mean, it is again about seeing and spending time and and coming to an understanding of people who are not ourselves, you know. And like in Jasper, you know, I was really young, like we said, and I was just there because I was I was wanted to work for Texas Monthly, and they do work like this. They tell these in depth stories about our state and the good parts and the bad parts and the you know. Um, the interesting stories <laughs> and um, but you know I I felt that one of the the most looking back on it one of the most important parts of that project was that once we took all these pictures these portraits of uh, community leaders church leaders law enforcement officers um, we photographed two out of the three um, men one on death row one on serving life in prison um, family members of James Bird, or actually his son. And, um, but that all came together into a traveling exhibition um, that traveled to seven cities in Texas and to New York um, as well. But the first stop on that, that tour was Jasper. It was the town square had this little art gallery right across from the courthouse where the KKK and the Black Panthers had been like battling it out. Uh, a year or so before, um, but it was that the community was able to come and see some some light. You know, they they saw and they read the stories that they had been a part of. You know, they had they saw their their church leaders and their you know their community leaders who had done a wonderful job of like supporting their own community um, during this time of crisis. And they said, yes, you know he, he, he is a hero, you know, or gosh, that was difficult. And look at the truth of this. And there was, I think, so there was something really special about that, that, that Jasper it, itself could, could see. And even in the guest book, there were just so many people who wrote, thank you for doing this. Um, and um, it's like, it's helping us heal. Um, but I think what was great about it was that taking that extra time to be there um, and kind of concentrate on individuals, slow down, tell the story slower, as opposed to the headlines that were all over the news, you know, they, they were being painted in one, you know, malignant way. And yeah, there were some terrible things that happened there and people that were thinking a little bit backwards, but you know, there were also other people that needed to, to not be kind of painted with that broad of a brush. And so um, that felt good to be able to offer that to the community. And um, how, yeah. How do yeah. you get the emotion? Like I know from a different kind of experience, but just organizing with people and trying to get them to speak or share their stories or sometimes be mm -hmm. in photos and like, tr how do you develop a relationship with people so that they actually expose mm. that inner piece of them that sometimes they conceal, like, especially in what happened with Jasper, it was just so brutal and hard and your photography is so incredible because it captures 
people's humanity, but I'm sure it's not just showing up with a camera and taking a picture that there's like a deeper process to then get people yeah. to kind of show through their eyes and really who they are and what they're feeling and going through. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a magic wand, <laughs> but so, you know, cause I, I just spend a lot of time with people, you know, that's the difference. It's, it's, um, people come with their smiles lacquered on their face, you know, cause that's how you get your picture made, you know? And, um, and while when, when that's what the subject matter is about, you know, uh, that's great. Smiling in pictures is wonderful, but like when it's about something a little bit more serious, you know, I sometimes have to remind them, you know, okay, here's, this is what we're here for. We're here to tell this story and, um, and let's, you know, if you want to take some time to kind of, uh, to think about that and meditate on it and, and come back to me, you know, let's do that. And so it just takes a while to kind of, um, to get down to that level. And often after a few minutes, someone will make, you know, a facial expression or a, some body language that will speak to me. And I'll just be like, that's it. Okay this is where we are. Let's, let's keep, let's stay here and let's take about 100,000 more pictures. <laughs> no, I mean, there are, I do take a lot, but, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, um, it's just like working with somebody and kind of like opening up the door and being really humble. Um, and I mean, someone told me years ago, they were like, you bend over backwards to, uh, make sure those people can be who they really are. And I think that's what happens. It's like, I just kind of go here, let's just, you know, embrace it all um, right now. And, and I'm, and I think that's um, kind of the way I try and open the door um, to that kind of energy. Do you like to learn, giggle, and be occasionally shocked? Then No Country for Moving is the podcast for you. Who doesn't love a good interview-inspired story told by a humorously authentic Ghanaian Texan? You will not regret listening to this youngish woman do a deep dive with immigrant innovators and creators and discover what factors determined why they left their homeland to move to their new host country and why they stayed. Kyra doesn't shy away from any question and absolutely loves spilling the tea on her own life as well as her, her trailblazing guests. This podcast will leave you ready to empathize with stories unlike what you have heard before. And I hope you share it with your friends, family, and neighbors. I've also seen you in action where you literally like can bend over backwards to get the shot that you want. <laughs> <laughs> Become superhuman in your gumbiness. Oh my gosh, but I, it is harder to do these days. <laughs> Damn it, it. It, I have a little recovery time sometimes after photo shoots. Well, I would imagine, I, I would imagine that there is an emotional and a physical recovery time depending mm -hmm. on the subject matter. My goodness. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah, definitely. Okay. I know I haven't talked at all about the current project. I but know. I want to hear about, I would like to, let's get into the Essentials ATX project. Okay. This yeah. is, if you live in Austin, um, and are driving around downtown and see these powerful women that are superhuman in size. Um, that is the Essentials Project that Sarah has been um, introducing to us over the past month yeah. publicly. Yeah. Um, and we'll share it on our social media account. So of course you can see it, but cool. um, I would love to hear like I your your spark for it and then what you've seen it turn into now yeah um okay so i was sitting right here at this desk <laughs> i really <laughs> well, I, was, I think i was um and uh and it was i guess like a, maybe a month into the pandemic probably it was like a year ago today right uh yeah. no almost um and uh yes it was strangely probably wow. um yeah. and um, you know, I had lost some jobs that were supposed to be on the books. There was some real good, good jobs coming up. Um, and of course they were canceled and I was just thinking, gosh, you know, I don't know what this is going to be like, but, uh, but I knew that my work was not really essential, you know? And, um, 
and was kind of, you know, at peace with that, of course, because it was like, what are we going through? I wasn't struggling internally about that, about for myself um, yet, (laughs) but, um, but it was thinking about all the, the people who were out there, um, you know, risking their lives every day by going to work and, um, and how scary that must be with so much uncertainty and, 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 uh, and I was just thinking, like the bravery that it must take to get up every morning and go to work and then come home and know that you might, you know, transfer this illness, this disease to your, your children, your family members, um, your parents. And, um, and I just kind of, it was mind boggling to me. And, um, and so, and I was especially thinking about the women just, I'm a woman, I'm a mom. Um, and I was thinking about, I mean, not just moms, but I think women take, they just, they take on more, um, psychically, you know, and, uh, but I was thinking about moms. I was just thinking about, okay, you're out there and you come home and like, what's the process at the end of the day, like total decontamination, you know, uh, there's just, a whole full-time job of decontamination, making sure you're safe, wearing your masks that goes into the each day. And you're already tired. Mm-hmm. You've already worked a full-time job, maybe more, maybe like three jobs. Mm-hmm. And then you have kids at home. You can't send them to school. Like too much, too many, too many layers, too much. Of, too much. And, um, and so I was just feeling about it. And I was thinking, you know, what I do is take portraits. Can I somehow offer this, you know, to, to people? And, um, and so, you know, I started to reach out, um, and, uh, actually through, uh, a friend of mine who helped connect me to, um, a, a paramedic here in Austin. And, um, I ended up talking with her for a long time and, um, and then we decided to meet and, and, and take a portrait and I uh, met her at a medic station and uh, photographed her and, and three other uh, female paramedics. Um, and that kind of like started the ball rolling, but, but I was still doing um, environmental portraits. I was photographing these women at their place of work, always outside, but, Mm -hmm. um, but with like a background, you know, and, uh, and so that kind of got it started. And, and then I just kept opening it up. I was like, I need to photograph um, people in food service. I need to photograph people, you know, who work in the medical field and, 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 you know, at hospitals, I just kind of like, uh, it snowballed, you know, from there. And, and so I kind of, I think I had about 14 portraits that I had made and I decided to submit them to the Doherty Art Center because I was thinking we should have an art, show. you know, somebody should show this work. Someone needs to see it and let's honor these women. And, and I, I sent them a letter um, and I said, you know, let's have an art, you know, an outdoor art show. Is there a way to maybe um, put this work along the hike and bike trail? I had like these grand plans and no one asked me, but I, <laughs> I, you know, I sent a letter and. And I didn't hear back from them for a little while. And then I was made aware of the fact that um, the, uh, the city of Austin Parks and Recreation Museums and Cultural Programs was starting a, uh, a grant uh, called the Arts Responders Grant. Um, and it's art, artists responding to COVID-19. And so um, I, was, I sent my work in, I sent the portraits in, and a little while later found out that I uh, had received the grant. And that was, um, you know, at the end of last year. Yeah. And, um, and so I was thinking, oh, great, I'll just print these out and we'll put them outside somewhere. I don't know. And, you know, I kind of didn't know exactly how it was all going to come, come to be. But in talking with my, my representative at the Doherty Art Center, um, Annie, who's amazing, um, we, ha- we kind of started talking and we were like, she let me know that a, a key aspect of this grant was community involvement and like on a deep level. And 
what I was doing while I was photographing people in the community, I wasn't involving the community in the decision-making process in the like, they weren't participating in the making of that art as much. And so what ended up happening, which I'm so thankful for, it's changed my life really, um, is that we did a call for entries. Um, we kind of did some press releases, uh, KXAN did a piece about it. And um, so anyway, we asked Austinites to nominate the essential women workers in their lives. Um, and so basically it was a Google form, you know, you put your information, you put their information and you say why that essential woman worker um, inspires you. Like, what is it that they do on a daily basis? Tell us something wonderful about them. And it was awesome. We got like, we got over a hundred nominations um, from not a very you know, large, you know, we didn't, we didn't probably publicize it enough, but we got a lot and we decided um, that we would select 10 to 15 um, of the nominees to have their portraits made from there. So I kind of love that I wasn't 100% um, responsible for the decision making. It was the community yeah. that helped us, you know, decide. And it was amazing to see all these faces, read all these stories of, of people, what they do at their jobs on a daily basis. And just like how it, it was just, it was awesome to read these stories. Um, and so from there I had to, you know, whittle it down to 10 to 15, which was very difficult. Um, and, and then we did this portrait, uh, set up in my screened in porch over here. Um, so that it was open air. Um, uh, but, uh, we, I set up a white backdrop and we did, uh, portraits of these women and, um, and then from there, it was like, I talked to Annie and at Doherty Art Center and we were trying to figure out how to present them. Like what would be the exhibition of it? Because we can't have an indoor art show. It's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be outdoors and it's gotta be open to everyone. Um, and so um, we were thinking, oh, yard signs or I don't know, uh, you know? And then I, I mean, I was thinking about it and she was like, we, you can do wheat paste posters. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> yes. And there's a, there is a, an artist named JR who does these insane, huge portraits on the sides of buildings, mostly in Europe. And, um, and I, I had been completely blown over by his work really, um, a couple years ago. And it, like when, when Annie and I were talking, I was like, I, I mean, I, I have to do it, <laughs> you know, that <laughs> we got to do these huge portraits. And so um, that we ended up, you know, deciding to do really large wheat paste portraits and not include any environment behind them and just smack them on the sides of these buildings around town. So it's just these individual amazing women there for no good reason, except to say, here I am, you know, so. Um, and what's yeah. it? It's, I, I think that it's incredible. And I'm so, um, what's it like for them to see themselves on the side of a building? Yeah, um, it's been really emotional, you know. Um, I've been present for a couple of like first time viewings of it. Um, and there are, gener there's always tears. Um, and they're just like, what, you know, they can't kind of, it's hard to process. I mean, I can't imagine myself that big. That would be really strange, you know, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, um, I think everybody's loved it. It's been overall just super. I mean, I really cannot say anything bad about the whole experience. It's, it's been awesome. It's almost yeah. like sometimes the, you know, the tough political moment or not tough healthcare moment we find ourselves in public yeah. health issue it forced it to go outside and be seen even more which I love you Me know too. um and I know from having organized with essential workers low-wage workers for like a decade I remember we did a photography project like oh my god it's almost like 15 20 years ago at this point mm -hmm. and some people had never had a photograph of themselves like that and it was just like um 
super moving for them. And mm-hmm. if you go to their homes today, it's like the one photo hanging up still 20 years later. So like, you know, um, it's just like so incredible what it can mean to people. And I also love that the city put out a grant to keep, to use this moment to actually like lift up art um, and storytelling. And it's like in these moments when we need it most and oftentimes it falls to the last of what people prioritize in moments when we think about like, oh, we need to get back to work. But we also, artists need to work and they we need stories of vision and hope and truth telling in moments like this. Um, so, you know, we were talking about essential workers and the struggles they face. Um, you know, your work is not considered essential work, but it comes along with a lot of struggle as well. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering for you, you know, can you talk to us a little bit about, you found your passion, your heart is in this work, you've been doing it um, a long time, even though you look so young. So oh, there's, there's a softening blur perhaps. Yeah, no, sure. <laughs> but like, I'm just wondering for you, you know, talk to us a little bit about some of the struggles of being an artist and sticking with your passion in your heart, even though, I'm going to guess you're never going to be a gazillionaire from doing this incredible work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I feel like I figured it out like midway through college, I figured out the kind of work I wanted to do maybe towards the end, I guess. And it was this portraiture and nobody is buying pictures like real serious portraits of people to hang above their couches, other people, maybe their own family, but not of, you know, random other people. So there's really not like a whole big print sale part of my life, you know? Um, but it's, uh, yeah. So it's kind of this strange little path I've tried to navigate, but, um, but yeah, it's, you know, I go through waves of kind of being completely uncertain as to what I'm doing. Like, long periods of time actually, where it's kind of like, wait, what have I chosen to do? Why did I do this? I can't go get a job anywhere else right now. Cause I don't even, you know, I just like kind of, I go through those cycles of just like doubting myself. And I know that a lot of artists do and everybody does, but, um, but yeah, I haven't chosen a career that has a ladder that you climb. It is all yeah. over the place. Yeah. And Martha, I know, you know, and you know, you know, it's just like, you're figuring it out as you go. And like right now, I mean, the environment is so uncertain for so many people um, that I almost kind of feel like a lot of people are just in that same, that same strange boat, like what's next, you know? Um, But I don't know. I just, I, I, I read somewhere about like figuring out kind of what you're, what your strengths are. And I did this like little, this quiz and everything. And, um, and I found out that I, I am an advisor and, but, and then, and then an artist as well, but second, like Mm -hmm. that, that it's more important, the message that I'm sending or the thing that, you know, the, the, information I want to share or the story I want to tell is actually more important than the craft itself. Mm -hmm. Like the pictures are like the facilitator of the message. And like, I hadn't thought about it like that until just recently, but it fits so much with this project because I'm not reinventing the photography wheel. Like I can take good pictures. I'm like solid, you know, but I'm not going and being like this crazy photography innovator. Like that's not my role. It's, it's about like opening up the microphone to the, to the people on the other side of the camera somehow. It's um, like opening a portal of conversation and like letting people tell their stories and facilitating storytelling. Um I think that's, I'm, I'm finding that that is actually what I'm doing. You're Um, totally doing that. Yeah. It feels good to kind of realize that. Well, yeah, because like, it's a, it's a series of, of conversations that you've instigated. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. With really fun, in a lot of cases, 
like engaging guides to it, but yeah. 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 And I love that. Okay. So what we, another byproduct of, of the project is that we, you know, because we had the call for nominations, you know, I asked people upon sending in these nominations, check the box. If you're in a, you know, okay with putting this on social media. And so um, we ended up now we're putting all of the nominations, the photographs people sent in and the, um, this worker inspires me, this woman inspires me because information, and we're putting it all on um, Instagram. And so it's like creating this community of people, like it's outside of me. Actually, I have someone helping me post all those things, but it's like this growing community that um, that's forming, you know, I was, I was in a cave for a year, like everybody else. And I feel that suddenly, like I'm connected to all these people, you know, yeah. that I never knew before and everybody else is connecting to each other. And then people can go see the work out in the world. And I don't know, it's just, that's such an awesome part of it to me. It's, it's beyond the port, the, like the main portraits. It's about uh, this other kind of like community that's being formed. Yeah. And like one other thing I'll, I'll say is that I've noticed on Instagram that people will go and have their pictures made in front of those big portraits. And like there was a woman who was a nurse who was standing in front of the woman who's an ICU nurse and having her picture made with her. And she's like, you know, I'm so glad that we nurses are getting, you know, some recognition and some praise. And I just love that, like, you go and you can connect with that person, even though they're not you, you know? Yeah. So. Well, and they're all like, like we all have been for the last year, but everybody is kind of masked up. And so there is enough anonymity to be able to sort of project yourself into mm -hmm. the, into the portrait. Yeah. Um, so really it's a little bit of an iteration of the last question, but you know, it is, a, it is not the easiest path to be an artist and how do you, what are the things that you do to nurture your commitment to it? Um, because you, you have, I mean, you've been in it for 20 some years now. That's something. Yeah. Um, and I know that we've had long conversations about this, but oh, yeah. there is, there are other, there are other things um, that, that I know that you've done to care for the art in you. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, I've just always felt like I had a real gushy inside <laughs> that I had to nurture. Um, I'm very empathetic. I would say I just like I go in and I just kind of feel people's feelings. And sometimes that's really hard. And um, and I think I used to take it on a little bit more when I was younger and like would put it on my shoulders Totally. And, um, and I think I'm better now at kind of like separating and going and, um, having compassion, but not having to like completely absorb, you know, everything, everybody's feelings, everybody's feelings. Um, but I do feel like when I was a kid, I was very much that way. I was, you know, I could feel the energy in the room shift and just like have to think about it and ponder it, you know? Totally. Um, yeah. Um, but I, um, I think I've done a lot of yoga meditation and, um, swimming mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, so much of it I think is about kind of getting back into your body and, um, and being present. Yeah. And, and being, being outside, outside, being outside. Yeah, absolutely. Being outside. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for folks listening, my son has come into the bedroom, my, my recording, my private recording studio, which is the bedroom. Um, but I, you know, we all have kids. We are seeing so many art programs taken out of schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that as like all parents, that makes us pretty sad. Yeah. But I'm just wondering, like, what advice do you have for parents 
about how we can nurture that creativity because art is like you've said is really like you have a a mushy middle right it's like it's how you see empathy it's how you can see the world and possibilities in ways that you couldn't and without art we just don't have that so how do we nurture that and give that to our kids um so that they can see the world and these multiple layers that you make us see through your own art yeah. You know, the other day I was, I was listening to a podcast. I'm a, I've been doing a little podcast listening to thank you know, thank you guys for making one of the most beautiful ones. And I, uh, I was reminded, I was on a walk kind of in my neighborhood that, and it was actually a construction site that I was walking by. And I was reminded by this woman in my ear saying, stop and look at what's around you and notice the nature and see its perfection. And literally it was like a sidewalk right over here is a construction site. I looked down, okay, there's the blue bonnet. There's uh, you know, an evening primrose. There's a weed that has an amazing flower that I've never noticed. There's another weed that is like this beautiful, I don't know, cabbage like thing, you know? And I was just, suddenly I counted from, for about two blocks, I counted like 14 different flowering plants. And I decided to look at them and like, thank them. And, um, and there was something about that that was really grounding. And, uh, I think that's art, you know, it's, it's noticing and recognizing the beauty that's around us. And even when it's, you know, just stopping to, to see what's around you. And I think, um, it's, uh, it's hard to remember to do that because you're just, too busy to, you know, to your mind is too busy, but I mean, that's accessible. Like the nature, the beauty of nature, um, is, is accessible to everybody, you know, if you can get there, but, you know, as far as art goes, um, I can't even fathom, you know, why, why people think it's okay to take art out of school. Um, no, not okay. And, um, you know, the countries that put it first and foremost, like there are grants, you can survive as an artist, um, you know, and it's wonderful. It sounds dreamy, you know, and it, but it's the right way to go. It's, it's absolutely, people need to have ways to communicate that aren't verbal, that aren't, um, you know, here that, you know, we need to be able to express ourselves. Um, but I don't know where I was going. Where am I going with this? Well, I mean, I know that one of the ways <laughs> I can help. Yeah, I know I, that one of the ways that you do that with your five-year-old is yeah. that you very intentionally take him into nature, not yeah. nature that's like inaccessible and far away, but like, yeah. like you were saying out on the street and, and it, just take the time to like, let him explore that natural world. Absolutely. You know, today we, we went down to the Colorado river and, um, we tromped around in the water kind of below Longhorn dam. And, um, that's available to everyone. Yeah. Um, it is free of charge. You can go. And, um, and I love that because it reflects that, um, that everyone who's there, it's just like this diverse community of people that are all there to kind of absorb um the environment and it's it feels really good to be there and you know with my kid through throughout this this uh this year we've been collecting strange things like toilet paper rolls and um you know different packing materials and um, cellophane. I mean, we're going to kind of look like pack rats pretty soon, but, uh, <laughs> but we use those things, you know, for art projects and, um, and simple, they might not even look good at all in the end, but we have gotten a glue stick and we have gotten some cardboard together and we've made something and it feels really good just to like yeah. have that, that feeling of accomplishment and working together with your kid on something. It, it's kind of like my favorite version of a day well, is to to make something yeah. yeah and I feel like doing that with our kids is so important because mm -hmm. it allows them to connect like I think what we need to understand is that art music photography these visual and like 
they are forms to feel emotion that Mm -hmm. are not given to you in any other way, that there is something so incredible about the human capacity to feel Mm -hmm. um, that is invoked through art. And I am just so grateful that your art in this world has given us that. And Mm -hmm. I just want to keep repeating that with my own son because that will let him be a healthier, happier person that can connect to other people and just like, thank you for doing all of this incredible work. And I, I'm like excited to go build stuff with Santi, you know, yeah. um, it probably won't be as like nice as yours, but <laughs> it's going to make us feel something and be really proud of what we build too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I think it's hard when you are an artist to allow your kid to make work that's not good. <laughs> you know, like I, I don't know what you're saying because everything my child makes is brilliant. Is I just brilliant. want to say it's like I, yes. totally gorgeous. Well, it, my mine too. You know, but there are times when you're like, oh, maybe you could, you know, make a line go this way or that way. And I think, like, I've cured myself of that. Um, let him leave him alone. You know, just like let him do it. Um, maybe you know if he needs help, help out or you know do the work together. But like, there are times when they're like his drawings where he can actually, he can actually make it work. And, um, and so I try and kind of step back and see what kind of expression comes, comes forward um, naturally. Um, and that's really exciting to see. Sweet. Yeah. No. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. So, yeah, I just loved talking to Sarah and it's just, you know, as a mom for, for me, I just, like I said, when she was on the show is just art is so critical to the human experience. And so many times we don't value what it means. And when you talk about like one of our shared goals as the three righteous mamas is growing people's empathy and understanding of one another. And there's something about art, whether it's through music or um, painting or photography that just exposes people or performance art that make, that connects people. And Mm -hmm. like, you don't even have to speak the same language. You just speak the same emotion. And that's what I love about it. I love that part too. And I loved hearing her. I mean, this is a human being that I have known since, since I was 24 two, months old, so you since I was talk. two years old, we couldn't talk, but we knew that like that, that we were each other's people. Um, and it's so, I mean, to, to get to have witnessed her career and what she's done, but also like that it, her empathy is her superpower and it always has been. And, and to see um, how safe, she makes people feel it really reminds me of how safe her mom made me feel and how she is able to translate that emotional safety into something that like you just said we can connect to without any further explanation it's just like that that power of of the image is so um it's universal i love it and seeing people respond to the, to the women around town, um, the powerful women around town who have been our essential workers in this pandemic is, um, it's really inspiring to see like that everybody can see how, how fierce they are. I'm so glad we got to talk to her. And I just hope that, you know, for folks listening, if you, haven't been a person to connect with like art and music with your kids now is a really great time to do it because you just little people and big people discover things about themselves and their world through it and if you are in austin and you haven't seen sarah's work drive around town martha mentioned where and go look at her beautiful work and capture it and share it with other people and thank you martha for introducing us to sarah my pleasure 